This is Andy Purwell for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to be joined by DJ Creel. I hope I've said that right, DJ. Um, if not, I apologise. And he's trainer Derek. Um, DJ, first foremost, how's life? What did he say? How, how is life? How are things going? Oh, everything's going good, bro. Everything's going good. Thanks, man. Obviously, a South African native, being back over in the States now. How's life been? Um, obviously, getting ready in camp, getting ready for your fight. No, everything, I mean, everything's been going good, you know, obviously due to COVID, it's a little tough right now, um, but we, you know, we're just carrying on as we usually do, training hard, uh, just showing determination and, you know, ready to fight, bro. How difficult have the past, say, seven or eight months been for yourself with regards to working around the COVID situation? <laughs> Um, you know, like when we were getting ready for the first fight we were supposed to have, which was in April, um, we we're getting ready and it was just, COVID never happened and all of a sudden the fight got put off to COVID and then after that we just started preparing for the next and I mean, it's been the same in the boxing gym, um, even though it's COVID is happening, we're still training like we always do, so I mean, COVID hasn't had an effect on how we train or preparing for a fight or nothing so i mean it hasn't it hasn't changed much getting ready for this bout how has kind of your preparation or how have your preparations gone so far then has it been easy or difficult getting sparring partners in as has it been kind of everybody being very cautious traveling what have you how have you found trying to work around it um so sparring partners i've been i've been having some good sparring um a little bit bigger guys though um, so I mean, it's not a that's not that's not a problem though because I mean I'm finding a really tough guy can punch. So it, that's it's pretty good to have these bigger guys. But um, the guys that we were looking for and uh, like to spar with, they've been all they've went back home because of COVID, and so yeah, it's been pretty tough. But I mean, you know, we work around it. Um, but otherwise, like training and stuff, everything's been good. You know, me and my trainer Jerry Carmen uh, and Kenny Adams, we we just working the same as we always have. So let's bring Derek in now. Derek, um, how have you found trying to train fighters throughout these past seven or eight months of the pandemic? Well, I just started working with them recently, but you know, uh, it's been it's been uh, pretty good so far. I think the most important thing is just keeping him focused and uh, just keeping his determination up and getting his mind ready for this uh, upcoming fight here, January second. With Kenny not being like there physically with yourself at the minute, how how have you kind of worked around that and? feeding off advice that he might be giving to you guys to work on? Well, I, I, I'm like a, a, a piece of Kenny. Kenny used to train me. Uh, so the mind frame that Kenny has, I kind of like picked up and, and uh, kind of the same way of thinking or, and you know, of course he has a lot more experience and knowledge of boxing than I have, but I'm able to take what I did learn from him and show DJ how to beat this guy here on the January 2nd. DJ, talk to me about the fight on January 2nd and your opponent, Felix Alvarado, um, a very durable man. He's had uh, 37 fights, I believe. Um, what are you expecting come January 2nd? Well, I'm looking to our boxing. I'm looking at putting on a show. I just want to put on an exhibition and show people that I'm great. I want to be, I want to show that I'm great. You know, um, I want to be known as one of the best smaller fighters there's ever been and this is this is my time and this is one of the opportunities that i've got and i i got to put everything in so come january 2nd i just want to box and put on an exhibition um is, don't get me wrong he's a very tough guy probably the best I, I rate him the best out of all the champions in the division but i'm here to beat him man do you feel a pressure to perform and to, to win in style because of since boxing's return whatever shows i have been there's been limited spaces for fighters because we've just had smaller cards. Is there a pressure on yourself to make sure you make a statement on January 2nd? There's, al there's always pressure with any fight. Before before COVID happened, before all these small shows, it doesn't matter, man. I've always had pressure on myself to impress people. I always want to impress the fans. I want to make sure that I put on a good show for um, the boxing fans, and that's what it is, man. So there will always be pressure. Moving up in weight as well to challenge for the next version of the IBF title. Um, Derek, talk to me about that. how have you found DJ's transition in weight from minimum weight to uh, junior fly? Well, I think the three pounds is not that big of a deal for him. Uh, he's getting older, uh, not older as, you know, in boxing, but, you know, he's so the weight that he's moving up in three pounds actually probably benefit, benefits him more. 
with this guy here, like you said, he has 37 fights, but he's basically had a bunch of wars. So, you know, it's not like he has 37 fights and they've been easy. So when you find a guy that has 37 fights, we have to take advantage of what he's been doing consistently to become a champion. And that's just moving forward. He just, we should outshine this guy easily. If DJ is determined in his mind and work on the game plan that we set forth, this should be, uh, not that it won't be easy, but it should be, you know, we should be able to pick this guy apart. He's coming straight forward. You don't have to look for him. He's there. So we'll be ready for him. That three pounds, I think, benefits DJ, though. Sorry, I was going to say, and they're moving into 2021. Have you guys got a plan as to how you would like the year to play out? I know it's hard to say because, again, the pandemic is still affecting us all, but have you got an idea as how you would like the year to play out? Well, we got short-term girls. We have long-term goals. The short-term girl right now is take care of this January 2nd, and then we work on the next game plan moving forward with his manager, Hector. DJ, for yourself, have you got an idea as to what you would like to kind of achieve? Yeah, so I've always set goals for myself. Um, like Derek said, you know, I'm not overlooking out Felix Alvarado. Very, very great fighter. He's good. Um, so my main plan is just to beat Felix Alvarado. But yeah, obviously, I've got a future goal. And I mean, after I beat Felix, I'd like to fight um, like for unification band. I would lo love to get a unification. And then, you know, even then I want to move up. So... I want to get a unification bout and then after that move up to 112. DJ, one thing I'm always interested in is with the lower weights, it seems a lot harder to kind of get the recognition that you obviously see, you know, the glamour divisions, the heavyweight division, for example, get, how do you find trying to kind of generate the interest around your career of boxing at such a small weight? Um, well, I don't think it's a big deal of, of what weight it is. I think you just have to entertain. You know, you just have to be, be an entertaining person and uh, entertain the crowds and entertain the people. It's about um, people got to like you and like your style and you got to put up a show. That's what we're here for. We're here to entertain. And if you can entertain at any division, people will like you and you can be sold, you know, your brand. Because, I mean, it always used to be heavyweights. You're just watching and then it just got smaller, you know, Floyd. Uh, Walter Waits and now the lightweight division. So, I mean, you know, back in the days, there was Michael Carbajal, Chiquito Gonzalez. You were told, uh, there was baby Jake Matlala in the smaller weights. People knew him from all over the world. It's so, like I say, those kind of guys made an impact on boxing. And it wasn't, it, it didn't matter what weight they were. Uh, and it's been like that a lot of times. There's 118 pounders that everybody knows. So, and I mean, that's smaller weight divisions. Uh, Roman Gonzalez, 115. It's just about what you can do and if you can entertain people. Just before I let you go, gents, just want to get your thoughts on some upcoming fights. Start off with the headline about on your bell, the Campbell Garcia fight. What are your thoughts on it? How do you think that one will play out? I hope I hope uh, Garcia wins. Um, he's he's very good for boxing. Um, he's a very sellable and and people like him, you know. So it, it's good for him if he wins. And I also like him. I like his style. Uh, he's a good good puncher. I think he can go very far in boxing. Um, don't get it wrong. Luke Campbell's a very, very tough fighter, very smart. Um, but I do think Ryan Garcia can win, and I hope he does. I hope he wins as well. Uh, that's I think that's a great fight for Garcia. Uh, and, the, you know, move, that's a solid guy. If he beats him, that's making a real statement. And then hopefully when he does win, then he can fight Teofimo Lopez. <laughs> Uh, moving forward again, uh, Canelo Smith, we, we see that one next weekend. Just your thoughts on that one again, gents? I think I think Canelo, I, I don't think there's anyone that can beat Canelo right now. But, I mean, him moving up in weight, these are tough fights. Callum Smith is very good. Um, don't get me wrong. He's he's very, very good and he's big, which plays the plays the big part for himself in him being the bigger fighter. But I still think uh, Canelo can beat him. I think he's going to win. What do you add? I think it, you know, Canelo's solid. So it's going to take someone with, you know, a uh, hell of a skills and hell of a mind frame to beat Canelo right now. He's on top of his game. You know, uh, him and Terrence Crawford and some others are uh, pound for pound best right now. Well, guys, we'll leave up there now. I'll leave you to either get home or to begin your training session. Um, I appreciate your time, though. Best of luck with January 2nd if I don't catch you beforehand. And thank you for speaking to Boxing Social.